you doing? Good. How are you? Thanks for coming on today. Thanks. I appreciate it. I think this is my first uh, like public podcast, so I'm excited to just get into it. And I appreciate you inviting me on. Yes, of course. So for those of you listening, I've got Ray Marshall with me from Ray Marshall Photography. And I met Ray probably about a year ago this time, like last spring, correct? Yeah, I uh, I officially moved to Raleigh in June, uh, but I was kind of showing up a little bit before then. Uh, I knew I was moving here in February, so I started just dropping in. <laughs> I love that. Yes, and that is a huge part of specifically why I wanted to bring you on today, because I feel like you did everything right in moving and like rebranding yourself, reestablishing yourself in a new market. And you have so much insight and this is like your wheelhouse. Branding is your wheelhouse. So I'm excited for you to talk to everybody today, specifically about if you are someone who's ever had to move your business, or if you're someone who's looking to rebrand, Ray's advice is going to go for you, whether you're like physically moving locations or just looking to re-up your brand in your local market. Um, so anyway, I'm going to turn it over to her, let her tell you about her like journey and moving, rebranding her strategy and coming or like moving to somewhere new or rebranding herself. Yeah, so I sort of came, became an expert on moving my business by uh, force against my will. Um, so I am a military spouse. My husband was a Marine for almost 10 years, and that came with just some guaranteed moves. And I don't know if you guys have ever moved before, but as creative entrepreneurs, um, every time we were deciding like, okay, we're going to have to move again or not deciding someone's deciding for us, people be like, well, that's so easy. You can just work anywhere. And I'd be like, it is so much harder to move your business than, you know, the regular person realizes because so much of what we do is based on reputation and word of mouth and all of those things. So I eventually kind of became an expert on this topic and uh, figured out things that worked and things that didn't work. So I've moved five times. I've moved from Huntsville, Alabama to Nashville, Tennessee, to Jacksonville, North Carolina, to Pensacola, to Hawaii. Actually, this is six times to Washington, DC, and then to here. <laughs> Bless it. I could not imagine. <laughs> which was crazy. And some of these moves were like really quick. And so um, there were times where I was really frustrated and I would kind of be in two places at once. And then there were times like Hawaii, which I was there for five years and really kind of my, my business kind of blew up in Hawaii and I really became like a destination expert um, and then took those lessons kind of to hear um, because in the Hawaii market, one thing that's really interesting is that it is so um, based in tourists coming. And so, so much of what I learned there was how to market to people who have never heard of you before. So one of the things um, that I started realizing was that, uh, you know, website presence, online presence, social media presence, how can I make those things really persuasive? How can I make people understand that I am trustworthy and reliable if they've never met anyone who's ever worked with me before and they have never heard of me before until they started Googling? Um, and so that's one thing that made uh, moving here really a lot easier because I knew how to persuade someone of my trustworthiness already from that market. Um, so... <laughs> Like this is just like such a huge topic already. Um, I started photography like 20 years ago too. So that has also really helped with just knowing what works and doesn't work. So I'll just get right into some of the things that I started doing in the Raleigh area right when I started moving here um, that really worked for me this time and things that I recommend for other people. So the first one is um, I did jump into doing styled shoots. I have um, a lot of opinions on styled shoots and when to do them. Um, because I think that it's really popular nowadays to sign up for group styled shoots. And I do recommend those for certain times. And so one of the reasons that I jumped right into doing a lot of group styled shoots right when I moved here was the first one was to just literally start meeting people. It was I wanted to meet other vendors. I wanted to meet other photographers. Um, that is so important with just people thinking of your name when they need a, another photographer, when they need 
you know, um, anything that we might need as far as like uh, community um, emergency help, you know, you just want to build your network. Um, the other reason was I had tons and tons and tons of Hawaii work. And when you're marketing to clients in a local area, you need to make sure that they are recognizing their city, that you um, can create beautiful work in the places that they're envisioning. Um, a lot of times I, I like to tell people that clients can't really visualize like if you say, oh, I could make this beautiful forest work, but all you're showing is beaches, then you're going to have a huge issue kind of creating that instant trustworthiness, um, which is, I think, the number one key to uh, getting clients in general, but especially when you move to a new market, is focusing on how can you show that you're trustworthy. So I focused on hitting venues around Raleigh that people would recognize. And I signed up for group style shoots, but I also planned some of my own styled shoots. And this is where it can get a little bit tricky because <laughs> I think it's a bit of an art to plan your own styled shoot. I don't know if you have, have you ever planned one yourself before? I have. <laughs> yeah. It's, there, like a, it's wild. It's really difficult. It's not it's not easy. That's why I like to just attend them. <laughs> I would rather pay someone else to just plan it and then I'll just go. <laughs> yeah. So I do, I do recommend like if you've never planned a style shoot before or even been to one, like you really should find some reliable group style shoots first so that you can kind of understand what makes them special. But once you get to kind of a level where you want to be elevating yourself and want to be standing out, because if there's 20 photographers of the styled shoot, you're just not gonna stand out no matter what. Um, planning your own styled shoot has been um, one of my key strategies, but doing it with um, a lot of intentionality. So basically I I put in like a good amount of money into the, the couple of styled shoots that I have planned myself. Um, and if people wanna know what that number is, it was about two to 3000 for me. I've put in between two and 3000 in different shoots. Um, but making sure that when you do that, that you're working with high-end vendors. I love to have a planner on board um, because they're experts at it, but I also am very involved in the design of the shoot. I actually love designing. Um, so and I want to I... caveat really quick. <laughs> Go ahead. Your shoots, the ones that you plan uh, are in vogue. Oh yeah. <laughs> and the one that um where we met that I came into video for when you like very first moved here was featured in Magnolia Rouge. Yeah. And is that, that's it, right? Magnolia Rouge. Yeah. I need to submit that one again. That was that one. I, that shoot was gorgeous. And so I, I can say firsthand that these shoots, they're very nice. They're very expensive. They're very high end. They're very luxury. And that's really important when building out a portfolio, especially for someone like you, who's established in a higher end market. And so anyway, I just wanted to caveat that and just say she's been featured in Vogue, you guys. So anyway, <laughs> sorry to interrupt. <laughs> a lot of pressure now. Um, but I was going to say, I nowadays I go into styled shoots and my number one goal with them, if I'm going to be putting this money in, which was terrifying the first time, by the way, it's not something that I think is going to be easy for people. And you really have to be strategic, but it is um, making sure that you try and find a venue that you really want to be working at, that you want people to bring you back to, that you pull vendors that you really feel like will be um, elevating your work and that you can elevate their work. And so it is kind of like, there is kind of a strategy to it, but at the end of the day, none of that matters if the shoot is boring. Um, so making it something interesting, something special, something that publications are going to be like, oh, this is something different that I've never seen before. And that's one of the secrets to getting published. Um, anyway, because I feel like there's, we can talk about luxury. We can talk about all these fun things. So, um, what should we, should we focus on brand? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, well, first I love all that. And I think like, that's, Something that goes for if you're relocating, absolutely. But if you're even just rebranding or if you're someone who's trying to jump price points, do all of that. Like get in on styled shoots that's going to elevate your portfolio and show higher end couples that you have like higher end looking things in your portfolio. Um, networking with the right people is huge. Getting in with other vendors who are going to refer 
couples in your price point is really difficult at a higher price point and really important for like the growth of your business. So this is all the behind the scenes stuff. It's not like you can be a great photographer and not make it because you're not doing these behind the scenes things. I know it is uh, hidden or whatever. And so um, yeah. like, oh, you blew up out of nowhere. And it's like, why? Well, I was actually like really working really hard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was very yeah. intentional that I got published in Vogue, right? You know, <laughs> not me. You got published in Vogue. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to like, just, you know, encourage everybody listening. You know, you don't have to move to do this. You can do this in your local market at any time but you should probably have a plan going into it. You should probably call Ray and be like, Hey, coach me on this. <laughs> so I mean, like, um, yeah, gonna... let's talk. Oh, oh sorry. sorry. Do one caveat because I have uh, talked with other photographers before about this and being like, Oh, just show up. And they'll say, Oh, but I'm really introverted and I don't like to like show my face. And I just want to put out there that I am actually an introvert. I really would rather be at home, like in my bed. And so I think the thing to remember, if you are somebody who kind of struggles with putting yourself out there is to um, just show up as a person, like, don't feel like it's a performance. Like you don't have to, like, if you're trying to impress all of these people, just remember, like, you actually don't need to impress everybody. You need to find your right people. And that's what I like to kind of go into it. Like people are like, I'm just going to have to, you know, put on this face and meet all these vendors. It's like, you just need to find your right people and think about it that way. And it can be so much less daunting. Yes, for sure. And I would say like in my business, my like main referral partners, it's the same three people all the time. And like, they're my people. And yeah. I book like 70% of my weddings for the year based on their referrals and like their good friends and everything else. So yeah, finding your people is so important. Um, so yeah, well, let's talk branding then. Um, because this is all the behind the scenes stuff, but without a compelling brand, you can really fall flat if you have great content. So you're such a specialist in this. So tell us about um your approach to branding and then I'd love for you to talk about the mogul makeover <laughs> um yeah branding is such a big topic and I think it can be such a, a word we throw around that people you know are like well what does that really mean um and so uh one of the things that I focused on for my brand was kind of finding out what made me really unique um and I think that's one thing that will really start to separate you is when you find out what makes you unique. And if, if you're kind of struggling with that, like think about what your clients tell you that you're really good at or what your favorite part of the job is. And then kind of just like dig harder into that. So um, then everything else will follow. And so once you kind of find out what makes you unique, then you're going to build kind of a visual aesthetic um, based on that. And I know that some people listening may not be photographers necessarily, videographers, but probably, you know, something in the creative entrepreneur genre. And um, I just can't emphasize how important it is to have a presentation box that uh, really is putting your work in the best light, because um, that stuff does matter, like no matter what people say if you if you've never been into like a designer store like I highly recommend walking into Louis Vuitton or Gucci at one point and really taking in what makes that experience feel elevated um, and it is going to be just the way that they show off the bags the way that the the people are, are dressed the way that they're making you feel important all of those things are actually a brand um, so what I like to, what I kind of focused on here was um, the first thing which I mentioned was the group styled shoots. I focused on styled shoots that kind of had a more elevated look who kind of separated me from my Hawaii market. Um, but also I have a bit of a elegant feel, a bit of a, um, what I use as my tagline is like my images feel like poetry. And so every single, you know, photo shoot that I go into, I'm, I'm thinking of that and trying to make sure that the end product kind of fits in with my key phrase that I've created for myself. Um, your website is so, so important, um, the way that it looks. And if you're not like a website expert, then, you know, getting a template or hiring somebody who is will make you so much money. <laughs> 
Um, I just, it's like mind blowing how much my, how much work my website did for me in Hawaii and now is doing for me here. Um, so I don't even have to do like bridal shoots as much, um, making sure that my website is not only a visual presentation, but also is very informative and answering the questions that people want to know is a really big one. Um, and then just the way you talk, the way you talk on social media, the way that you are showing up on your stories, your captions, these are all going to be things that people kind of piece together to figure out who you are. Um, yeah. So it's all yeah. About that. <laughs> Definitely. It is a lot. And I, I kind of want to circle back to, you said like your website makes you money. And this is something that I think a lot of people miss because a lot of people are like, well, I ran ads. I ran Facebook ads. I ran Instagram ads. I sent people to my website. I got a lot of clicks. I didn't get any inquiries. And it's like, it's not because your ads failed. It's because your website failed. Your website couldn't convert them into someone who was like, I like what I'm seeing. I want to work with them. And yeah. so your website, like it's one of the only things that you own. Like you don't control social media and what people see, but you get to control what's on your website and you get to control who's in your email and like directly talk to them. So it's so important. And I think that leads us to mogul makeover. <laughs> Tell us about that. So this is your newest venture. And I'm really excited because again, like this is your wheelhouse and anybody who is like, my website sucks should call you. <laughs> Thanks. I so I just, I actually just uh, started Mogul Makeover about four or five months ago, but I have been, I was kind of waffling with the idea for a long time because I'm, I'm honestly really busy with um, Ray Marshall photography, but the biggest reason I decided to do it is because I have two little boys and being gone every evening and every weekend is getting a little bit aggressive already again. And so I just was like, I'm so passionate about working with other people on their websites because I've seen how powerful it is for me. And so I opened the business, I think in January or February with my sister who is a HoneyBook systems expert. So she is like, I'm like a creative like ball of energy and she is like so logical. And so <laughs> kind of like the best of the, the business backend world of those two things that you need to be able to do. And so I, um, I learned, uh, WordPress. I'm an, I'm a WordPress expert, but I decided to open the business as a show it website platform because I realized, um, after being, um, so good with WordPress, WordPress that it's, it's really difficult. It's really difficult for most people. Um, and show it is so much more intuitive, so much more, um, easy to, uh, teach people to get them to understand. And it's absolutely beautiful results, especially when we're in kind of, a creative field with weddings and um, it's so visual. So show it ended up being like the perfect platform where I could really create these incredible designs. And I have absolutely been obsessed with seeing the results that come with taking somebody who has beautiful work, but this horrible little box of showcasing it <laughs> and then turning to something that they can really um, show their clients what they do best. Cause it is that hub. Yes. It's amazing. And I've seen, like, I've been stalking it on Instagram and like, I'm seeing the templates you're putting out and I'm like, that looks so good. And one day I'm going to call you when I'm ready to like, finally invest in my website again. I'm going to be like, Ray, come fix my website. Cause it's trash. <laughs> well, I, uh, gosh, I feel like I redid my website. Like, I mean, it's probably been like five or six times at this point. And, um, it's been really fun because I think every few years as a business owner, you do kind of rediscover, you know, yourself, your work changes, it grows. And so I do think it's such a good idea after, you know, a few years to really look at your website and be like, is this still showcasing what I do? Have I really leveled up at this point? And do I need something that really um, can convey that in my improved experiences or experience and my improved talent? Um, and that's what I think websites can really do for people. Yes. I love that. So real quick in our last couple minutes, do you have any website or like SEO tips for anyone who's like, I'm still kind of in the phase of DIYing my website. I'm not ready to hire Ray yet. What can I do before I hire her? Yeah, let me find my little SEO tips. I'm like, I'm stuff up the whole time. Um, okay. So 
<laughs> my first tip is to first make sure that you have a platform that you can actually edit and keep up with. There's a lot of times that I see, I'll go onto websites and it's just like old stuff. And there's like one blog and, um, I do believe that you can create a solid website without blogging, but it's going to be easier if you blog, um, because I can't tell you how many of my clients will just go through my blogs and be like, I absolutely love this location. I see that you shot at my venue. I'm loving the style that you did. That creates trustworthiness. You are showing your recent projects. And so that's going to cause you to get more bookings because you're showing the, the work and proving that you're constantly being trusted and hired. So I would say something that you can update and edit. The next one for SEO would be, um, I can talk a little bit about keywords. It's a huge topic, but um, the basic definition of SEO, search engine optimization, uh, is very daunting and scary. But what it really means is how can you let Google know what exactly your website is about so that it can give that result to the people who are looking for it? And so we're mostly local businesses. And so you need to make sure that you have your location, your desired location that you want people to be searching and finding you for on your website, not just once, but a lot of places. Um, maybe you can drop you know, whatever that phrase is, if you're in Austin, Texas, for example, just saying Austin, Texas in different places on the homepage, maybe it's on your contact page, maybe it's in your footer, maybe it's in your blog post. And Google's gonna be like, this person is in Austin, Texas. We should probably rank them for them for that. And so that's just like a really easy tip that I think a lot of people aren't doing. <laughs> Yes, definitely. And, you know, search engine optimization is like an ongoing process. A lot of people think you can one and done it. Like, oh, if I just put this stuff up once, it, I'm going to consistently rank. And that's not true. Um, SEO is like you, the search engines are constantly looking for what's the new content. Are you, is this website active? Is this person active? So that's really where I think blogging comes in because it's a really easy place for a search engine to be like, oh, this website's active. They're talking about stuff, you know, they're legit. But yeah, no, SEO is a huge topic. We we should do an entire episode just on SEO and busting the myths about it. But it is, it's an ongoing like strategy. You're not going to see overnight results, but if you're consistent with it, you will see yourself, you know, hopefully rising in the ranks if you're doing it right. Yeah, it is a long game because, I mean, there's always going to be competition. And so you're going to, you know, depends how fast you rise in the ranks does depend on who else is up there. But just being consistent and then realizing that another secret to blogging is that you can target multiple keywords in blogging. So if you're not ranking for, you know, the homepage, then you might be ranking on one of your blog posts. And so that is just a great way to start showing up more. Yes. Yes. Well, we have our last couple of minutes. Is there anything else that you want to add before we sign off? Oh, I'm just been really loving the um, Raleigh community. It's been so fun to kind of jump in and just not take it so seriously. And I just hear a lot of times people when they're talking about their market, they'll say things like, oh, it's really clicky, you know, or, um, you know, it's just been, it's just been, I'm trying to break in and I can't. And I, I think that maybe thinking about this in less of a business sense and more of like a, a human being sense people just are going to gravitate and want to work with people that they like and that's just the nature of it so just start showing up more start putting yourself out there and just being kind to people and finding your people is going to go such a long way in um, being a big part of your industry yes oh, love that so true well thank you for coming on today everyone this again is ray marshall i'm gonna have her website and info in the captions so be sure to check her out and i hope to have you back again soon to talk about seo or whatever else we want to talk about i know i could talk for like five years about the targeting business but <laughs> thanks for having me on i so appreciate it yes all right until next time